this way, reflecting, and then going through the beam expander. Now, how big can this beam expander make the filming volume? Yeah, it's about a centimeter. So inside there, it's about a Our lab focuses on getting large numbers of videos of insect flight and then analyzing those with software that we've built to extract the wing and body positions and orientations. Do you think the fringe on the bottom of the wing plays a role at all? In terms of the mosquitoes, I have to say that, you know, from my point of view, there's also this very compelling story of the mating behavior. I mean, it's, it's really fascinating what biology and evolution have come up with as ways to distinguish between uh, appropriate mates. Apparently, the females flap at a particular frequency and the females will choose the male that is best able to match that frequency with the flapping or beating of his wings. We have three phantom high-speed video cameras that can download their images directly onto a computer. We're filming at around 8,000 frames per second. That's all we need in order to capture about 40 pictures for each wing stroke. The cameras are focused on a very, very small volume in the box that the flies or mosquitoes can roam around in. And we trigger the cameras to record by shining two laser beams through the filming volume and having two detectors. So when the mosquito comes in and triggers both laser beams, the cameras record, they download the data onto a computer, and then they refresh and are ready to go again, and it's all automated. And he is bending his abdomen a little bit. They use their, their abdomen for rudders. The high speed and high resolution really allows us to get at how these animals are controlling their flight, how they're moving their wings so precisely in order to get these different maneuvers to happen. I have to say that you know all of this was really spearheaded by Leif Ristroff, who is uh, just a phenomenal graduate student working in our lab. He's the guy who put together this apparatus and has really been one of the, the leaders in developing the techniques in tracking insect flight. Well, y you know, I mean, it, it's, it's legs splayed out, so just, just as we saw before. So in terms of the mosquitoes and this particular phenomenon of beating the wings, I think that's Ron Hoy's expertise, and so those were the kinds of things that we get by having a campus like Cornell where people can interact with one another. That's what's fantastic about uh, Cornell. You really do get these groups coming together to make an impact that's larger than uh, the sum of the parts. I think with the mosquitoes, if we really understood the mating habits uh, of these animals, then we could disrupt it in the wild and maybe prevent outbreaks of malaria in stricken areas. And then from an even larger perspective, uh, again, you know, these animals are, um, they fly very differently from other insects. Uh, their wings are much smaller they flap over a much shorter range of angles. And so the question is, how are they able to manipulate their limbs or their wing motions in order to create the maneuvers? It's another fascinating story that I can't wait to sink my teeth into.